guy here. I got a gun for everyone. I kill everybody. I love weapons. From someone who fought two guys in 10 days and won three UFC fights in a two month span to turning into one of the most inactive fighters on the roster. Having fought only four times in almost four years, Hamzat Shemaev is finally back to face the greatest gatekeeper of the middleweight division, Robert Whitaker. The two are scheduled to lock horns on June 22, 2024, to headline the first ever UFC event in Saudi Arabia in a five round main event. But the question is, was it wise for Kamzat to return to action in the bigger boys' weight class against an athlete who has been smoking top contenders in the 185-pound division for years? How will Whitaker's cardio and excellent takedown defense affect Kamzat's game plan? Let's find out. Kamzat made his UFC debut on July 16, 2020 as a middleweight. The poor John Phillips stood no chance against the superior wrestler, who turned the ground and pound shredder on as usual and absolutely obliterated him. Boris made the quickest turnaround in the modern UFC era by accepting a fight on 10 days notice against Rice McKee, who was demolished within a round. Although the Gerald Mearshart fight was again at middleweight, it seems like Hamzat would rather battle welterweights, where he reigns supreme. That could be seen from his next two fights, against Li Jinlang and Gilbert Burns, which took place at 170. His next fight was also meant to be fought at welterweight, but Bors missed weight by a mile and was rescheduled for a catchweight bout against Kevin Holland, who had no answer for Shmaev's assault. The reason why Shmaev cuts so much weight to fight at welterweight is that his fighting style demands a lot of strength and stamina, which is easier to implement in a lower weight class. When relying on wrestling and takedowns, gravity plays a crucial factor, and the bigger they are, the harder it is to take them down. We saw what Kamzat did to Li Jinlang, lifting him like a feather as if he were weightless. Good luck trying that on someone as big as Marvin Vittori, who weighs over 200 pounds on a fight night. That could be seen from his last fight when he faced Kamaru Usman, a true middleweight. The Nigerian Nightmare accepted that fight on short notice, and Kamzat's performance was somewhat sloppy and action lacking. But that's the difference between fighting at welterweight and middleweight, and Kamzat simply had not spent enough time at middleweight to go up against the guy who's been fighting in this division for years. It's true that Shemaev is a big guy for 170. He struggled to make weight, and he will probably feel more comfortable at middleweight. But at the same time, one has to adapt to a new weight division by fighting lower-ranked fighters and favorable matchups rather than facing someone like Whitaker, who's made this division his home since 2014. So Hamzat Shemaev is back, but at what cost? Not only does he accept an unfavorable bout, but fighting as rare as rain in the Sahara Desert is also diminishing his star power. Fans like to see their favorite fighter fighting as frequently as possible. There are always new stars emerging and the sport is moving on. The reason why Boars became such a superstar overnight was because of his activity in smashing two guys in the range of 10 days. That guy is now gone and he barely fights twice a year. Why would Kamzat make his return at 185 and fight someone like Robert Whitaker? Imagine what would happen if he lost to Whitaker. And there is a big chance he will. All that hype around Kamzat would be gone. People would say that he was overrated and lost the first time he faced real resistance. The stakes are high where a victory would catapult Shemaev's name right to the title shot, while a loss would derail the hype train. But let's take a deeper dive into why Robert Whitaker is the least favorable matchup for Borg. I'm gonna smash everybody. How many fighters in the MMI division? I'm gonna smash all the whole division. Robert Whitaker is one of the rare examples of someone who found immediate success when moving up in a division. Since making his middleweight debut in 2014, the Reaper went undefeated for five years before he was KO'd by Israel Adesanya. As previously mentioned, one of the advantages that Whitaker has over Shemaev is his middleweight pedigree. He has fought 16 times in this division, even becoming an interim UFC champion in the process. The Australian has been particularly successful against wrestlers. Yul Romero is an Olympic wrestler, and Bobby Knuckles managed to defend against all of his takedowns. The two went 10 rounds against each other, while Robert emerged victorious twice. Another example of a good wrestler is Derek Brunson, yet Whitaker head kicked him to oblivion. And of course, let's not forget the battle against Marvin Vittori. The Italian is a massive guy for middleweight who weighs around 210 pounds on a fight night. His style consists of constant pressure and takedown attempts, which helped him remain a top contender for years. However, being a strong and offensive wrestler against Robert was the same as having a free toy in your pocket. The Australian outclassed Vittori and won the bout unanimously. But the biggest advantage of all is the five pound experience that Whitaker has over Chimaev. The Reaper has been in five round wars five times in the UFC and he won four of them. That list includes names like Yol Romero twice and Kelvin Gastelum. 
His only five round loss was caused by Adesanya in a very close fight that could have gone either way. The point is, if you go to the judges' scores against Whitaker, you will probably lose. The only time Kamzat Chemaev went to five rounds was against Kamaru Usman, and many believe that fight should have been scored a draw. So is he ready to go five rounds against Robert Whitaker? The Australian has beaten Vittori, who is a bigger wrestler than Kamzat, as well as Yoel Romero twice, who is arguably the better wrestler than Boers. Chemaev would need something extraordinary early on to beat Whitaker convincingly. He would need to go at him head first and try to take him down sooner than your girlfriend would spend money in a mall. The problem with that is that Robert has the ability to staff the takedowns and force any wrestler to accept the battle on the enemy's territory, the striking department. Like he did with many of his previous opponents, Robert's game plan would have to be to defend the takedowns during the first two rounds and slowly wear Chemaev down before capitalizing on his tiredness in the latter rounds. We have seen Chemaev against Burns, when the Brazilian defended his takedowns, Force turned into a reckless brawler and almost paid the price for it. If he gets frustrated against Robert and doesn't manage to score the takedown, he will probably get in big trouble on the feet, as the Australian is the far better striker than he is. Whitaker knows how to preserve the energy for five rounds, while Chimaev doesn't have that experience. Hamzat tries to finish the fight quickly, but he wastes so much energy doing so. It's a risky move that can be rewarding or become a long, exhausting night. Robert's reason for accepting the fight is obvious, a shot at the title if he beats Chimaev. This is what Whitaker had to say after the announcement of the Saudi Arabia card. I think it's pretty clear cut for, for me if you just look at the way things line up. Obviously, you heard Dana speak about it online that this was the number one contender shot. Yeah. But also, like, I beat Hazmat. That, that's, that, I get a title shot. There's no other possibilities. I don't think Sean will be rewarded for sitting on the sidelines. The UFC don't, don't really like playing that. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, they can do whatever they want. Like, <laughs> yeah. The UFC probably promised Kamzat the same thing. He is willing to make the shortcut to the title shot, but at what cost? Would he be able to win against Whitaker? The Australian mentioned that he is willing to take Chemaev to war. The only slugfest Kamzat has been into was against Burns in a three-round fight. Would he be able to keep up the pace against Whitaker, whose comfort zone is a five-round fight? Hamzat Chemaev's return to the octagon against Robert Whitaker raises significant questions about the cost of his hiatus and the risks of his chosen path. After a meteoric rise, highlighted by his dominant performances and remarkable activity, Chemaev's prolonged absence from fighting has led to concerns about his readiness to face top-tier competition in the middleweight division. Chemaev's decision to return at 185 pounds, a weight class where he has limited experience and against a seasoned contender like Whitaker, is a bold move with potentially high stakes. Whitaker's extensive middleweight pedigree, coupled with his proven ability to neutralize strong wrestlers, presents a formidable challenge for Chemaev. Whitaker's adeptness at defending takedowns and his superior striking skills could force Chemaev into unfamiliar territory, testing his stamina and adaptability over a five-round fight. Moreover, Chimaev's sporadic fighting schedule has dimmed his once illuminating star power. Fans drawn to his rapid ascension and exciting fighting style may now question his commitment and ability to deliver consistently memorable performances. A loss to Whitaker could further erode the hype surrounding Chimaev, potentially derailing his path to a title shot. While a victory over Whitaker could catapult Chimaev into title contention, the risks associated with this matchup are significant. Whitaker's five-round experience, strategic acumen, and well-rounded skill set make him a formidable adversary, especially for a fighter like Chemaev, who thrives on early finishes and aggressive tactics. In conclusion, Kamzat Chemaev's return against Robert Whitaker is a high-stakes gamble that could either reignite his ascent or lead to a setback in his career trajectory. The outcome of this matchup will not only shape Chemaev's future in the UFC, but also serve as a testament to the cost of his hiatus and the challenges he faces in reclaiming his status as a rising star in the sport. Thank you for tuning in, fight fans, and we can't wait to see you on the next one.